Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today we have our little Easter Bunny at the beach because I put together 15 of my best coastal Easter DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. The first one I wanted to do a coastal bunny rabbit sign. So I'm going to use some burlap, a bunny sign from the Dollar Tree, and um, you're just going to need like a rectangular sign. I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree chalkboards. I love them because they're nice and thick, so they don't bow or anything like that. I'm just going to cover the chalkboard part with some of that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree and the white wood boards. I love that. I always think it provides a nice coastal background for DIYs. To get a perfect cut around the edges, I just use a sanding block and sand that off. This is just about the right size to cover this rectangular sign. And I like to layer my Dollar Tree signs. It makes them thicker and more substantial. And I think it adds a lot of character when you have a lot of different like textures and colors going on. So I just poke a hole back in the wallpaper and reattach the hanger, just tying two knots in the front. Now we can get started on our little bunny rabbit. It's kind of cute as is, but I wanted to cover this bunny rabbit with burlap. So I'm just using burlap from Walmart. It's only like $2 and something a yard from there. Very inexpensive, but you can use whatever you've got. I actually had just like a scrap piece and just using an ink pen to get around all the details and that cute little bunny rabbit. I love Easter. It's got to be one of my favorite holidays to decorate for. It's just so much fun. I love bunnies. So just making sure I have all the details written on there with my pen. And now I can just go in and cut out this bunny rabbit. So just using some sharp fabric scissors, I'm just going to go in and just cut around that line. Just a super easy way to make a template and it's going to be easier to cut it out now than it would be after attaching it to the little bunny. But I thought we could do just a little coastal bunny rabbit and the burlap goes perfectly with that. But if you were to make a few changes to some of the details I do on it, you could, this would kind of go with any kind of decor. And it's kind of got some little bump outs on his little cheek there and his little feet. Now I'm gonna make it like the back of my bunny rabbit. And so you're like looking at the bunny's back. So to attach the Mod Podge, I'm just gonna do a fairly thick layer of matte Mod Podge all over and lay that fabric on there. You can kind of, you know, move it around to make sure you're getting it all the way to the edge and covering up all of your wood. It's pretty forgiving. And then I like to go over the top of it with another layer of Mod Podge to make sure that it stays down and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, make sure you get like, you know, an even coat of Mod Podge when you're going over the top of it because you don't want it to dry like in like patches of glue, but I'm, giving, I'm saturating it pretty well with it. I'm just going to go in with my heat gun and give that a dry and it's starting to dry in there. And then if you have any fraying that's bothering you, you can just go around the edges of your little bunny and trim that up. But a little bit of the fraying is going to kind of add to the character of it, I think. So just trimming up any of those little areas. And if you use like the synthetic burlap, you're not going to get quite as much fraying as this. But just giving him a little haircut. So I thought he would look really cute on those white boards. And so we're just going to attach him to our sign kind of like that. Super cute, super easy. I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach it to the board. And just press down. It's going to overlap the sides just a little bit, but I think that's okay. I think that adds a little bit of character to it as well. Now for the bunny tail, I thought it'd be really fun to do a sand dollar. 
So this is like a real sand dollar that I have, I think. Um, but you can also use the ones from the Dollar Tree they have in the short living section. But I do have these available in my Amazon shop if you do need sand dollars. And just using one of those little mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree, just as like a spacer. I'm using a combination of glue because I want to make sure it doesn't fall off. So it will kind of stick out a little bit and be a little bunny tail. I thought that was a really fun little coastal touch for a bunny rabbit. Now I want to decorate it a little bit with a little Easter bow. And I'm going to use, this is some of that, like the little Easter basket bags that they have for Easter at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to make my own like little seagrass ribbon with that. And we'll just make a simple little expo. I'm also going to use some of that zigzag burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and some of that really cute like turquoise happy Easter ribbon as well. We're just going to zip tie those all together. Gotta love it, expo. So easy. And just trim off the excess. And we have a cute little decoration for this. I'm going to kind of trim them all about the same size. And then I thought to cover the little zip tie, it'd be really cute to use one of these little carrot wood ornaments from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to give it a quick stain with some Antique Wax by Waverly to stain that wood. Super easy. Just sponging that on with a makeup sponge and wiping out the excess with a baby wipe. Now, it was about that time that I discovered that I was out of hot glue, which is like a travesty, right? So I'm just using some Dollar Tree glue to glue that little bow on. And then I was like, you know... I really have to have hot glue for this project. And I did pick up one of these from the Dollar Tree <laughs> that I never use. It's a hot glue gun. And um, I think they recalled those because they're not like super safe. So beware if you have one. <laughs> I made sure I watched it like a hawk when I was uh, doing that. And I glue my bow down and glue my little carrot on there as well. Then I thought it needed just a few more decorations, so I decided to make a little crown for my bunny with some of those little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. Those are also available in my shop, and I'm just going to do like a little crown just on the top of his head. So I didn't really want to add another bow to his ear or anything like that, but just another little coastal touch. And then I thought about doing like bunny toes, but since that's the back of the bunny, um... His toe pads wouldn't go that way, if you know what I mean. So I decided not, but seashells were my idea for that. Now to add a little grass, a little greenery for spring, I'm just going to use some reindeer moss and just hot glue a little row of um, reindeer moss across the bottom. And this DIY was really easy to put together, but it turned out so cute. I just love the little details like the little sand dollar tail. You can't beat that. And I think that is perfect. This is how our little burlap coastal bunny rabbit turned out for a little Easter sign for spring. So cute. I love him. And here he is, our little burlap bunny. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to make like a carrot patch sign. So I'm just going to use like a heavy, a long sign from the Dollar Tree. Can be anything. I just had one left over for Valentine's Day. And I just cut it down to about the size that I wanted because it was a little bit longer than I needed. You could also use the craft wood from the Dollar Tree for this as well. This might be a little thicker. Then I thought we could use these little bottle brush carrots from the Dollar Tree. They're like little upside down like bottle brush trees with their carrots but if you can't find these at the Dollar Tree you could probably paint bottle brush trees orange for sure but I thought it'd be really cute to make a little carrot patch sign but also to be displaying the carrots on this little board but I want like the carrots to be like they're sticking out of the ground so I'm just going to go on here and measure out some holes 
that we can drill in here so that we can kind of put the tips of the bottle brush trees down inside. And we're gonna do a total of five. So I just evenly spaced those out. And then I'm just going in with my drill and I'm just going to drill a little hole in the bottom, or I guess this is the back of that little sign. And just evenly space those out. That's just gonna give me a little bit of space um, to glue that down in there, make sure they stand up well and they don't fall over. And that like, I guess it's like MDF board from the Dollar Tree. It does kind of make a little bit of a mess. So we have our five holes. Now I just want to paint it to make it look a little bit better. So I'm just using some ivory acrylic and kind of going all over. Now be careful um, if you've already drilled your holes like that, you might want to paint it first. Cause then I had to go in and kind of clean um, some of the paint out of the holes. <laughs> And then this is the little carrot patch sign from the Dollar Tree that I thought we could use for this. It's going to be like a sign and like a little carrot display. Wanted to stain it, so I'm going to mix some Kirby and Blue acrylic with some water, half and half, to make a very cute little blue stain so we can paint that. Now, I didn't really want this little bunny rabbit to be on there because I wanted to stain the little carrot patch sign blue. So I'm just using um, a sharp edge and my glue gun to pop that little guy off. I thought it would be easier than having to try to stain or paint around him. So I'm gonna simply stain that wood. I love to do that for like a coastal touch because you can kind of see like the wood grain through it and do a nice thin coat of paint. Just gonna use a paper towel to wipe off the excess. We have a little blue carrot patch sign. I'm gonna go ahead and do the back as well, just because this is gonna be a standing sign. So I'm gonna to wanna to make it look nice from the front and the back in case you can see it. Now to decorate it a little bit, I'm just gonna use paint pens. I have like a little orange Sharpie paint pen. We're just gonna paint the little carrots orange. And then a green Sharpie paint pen to do the leaves. Super easy when you're using paint pens on these Dollar Tree signs that already have the outlines on there um, because it's just like coloring in a coloring book. And the great thing about the stain, instead of painting over it, is that the lines are still like super dark and so you can see exactly where you need to paint. Then for like the carrot patch sign, I thought I would use white. So again, just using a white paint pen and I'm just gonna fill in all of the letters. I love a good coastal blue sign with white writing on it. For coastal decor, I always think it looks really nice. So just take your time and fill that all in. Still easier than, you know, cutting on your Cricut or something like that. Um, Cause you have like, like your stencil right there just a color and it's fun. Then for the little bunny rabbit, I'm just gonna kind of stain him with a little ivory paint all over so I can still kind of see his details through there as well. And we're just gonna color him as well. I'm gonna use my orange paint pen to give him a little orange carrot with a green um, greenery on there. But that's about it for him. Then I'm going to distress the whole piece with my ivory to kind of give it that coastal vibe and reattach our little bunny rabbit. And I think that was probably the easiest way to deal with that sign with a little bump out piece. Sometimes those pieces can be really hard to get off though. So we have our little base sign and then we have all these bottle brush trees. Um, these were actually, I guess, ornaments. So they do have twine on them. So I'm just gonna go through and cut the little twine loops off the back, but I do like the little raffia bows that are on there. I'm gonna leave those on there. And then just using a dot of hot glue in the hole, I can stand the carrot up in there, just kind of holding it in place until it dries. And that's like the display look that you get. And I've seen bottle brush um, carrot decorations for Easter kind of similar to this, but this is definitely an easy Dollar Tree way to do this. So we're just gonna do that all the way down for all five carrots. Now I was thinking um, the carrot patch sign um, can kind of be just sticking out of the carrot patch. So I'm just gonna attach that to the back of it 
with like a little post. So there's our adorable little carrots with our little raffia bows. And for the post, I'm just using a popsicle stick. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that ivory to kind of match the base. And the popsicle stick is probably not like the strongest piece of wood I could have used for this, but it was kind of what I had and it was gonna be easy to make it whatever size I needed it. So I'm just gonna glue that to the back of our little carrot patch sign. It's not too heavy. And then I can just cut that with scissors down to size to make it exactly the right height that I need. Super easy to cut that down. I just wanna kind of attach it to the back. So I trim it down until it's short enough to fit on my shelf. And then just using a little bit of hot glue to start attaching it here. I didn't think that the hot glue would be quite sturdy enough for that. So I'm also gonna follow that up with a staple from my staple gun or two or three. <laughs> and there's our little carrot patch sign, so cute. I did wanna add a few more little burlap coastal touches. So to line the sides of the base, I'm gonna use some of this burlap ribbon um, with the little ivory like circles kind of all over it. And we're just going to glue that all the way around the edges of our little carrot patch just to add another little fun detail. And I'm gonna go all the way around the back as well, just to make it look like a finished piece. And then I thought the carrot patch needed some detail too, so I'm actually gonna use some twine. This is that thicker twine that you get at Walmart, but you can kind of use whatever you want. You could also use rope if you wanted, but I just wanted a little bit more of a coastal vibe. And so that's the only reason I'm outlining this sign. And just doing a thin bead of hot glue all around the edges and gluing that twine down. And I think that looks really cute. I love all the different textures and colors on this. It looks really cute for my coastal decor for Easter. And this is how it turned out, our little carrot patch sign, complete with carrots. Aren't those bottle brush carrots from the Dollar Tree adorable? I just love this piece. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to make a coastal egg. And so I'm using one of these plastic giant eggs from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make a seashell Easter egg. Now, this was kind of a labor of love, but it turned out fantastic. It is so beautiful, it's such a work of art. So just removing the plastic from our giant egg and actually putting it together, I was a little worried about it staying together. And so I'm just doing a bead of hot glue all the way around the egg to kind of help reinforce that because we're gonna cover this with seashells. So we're gonna need it to be kind of strong. I'm just using a Dollar Tree seashells, like these little scallop type shells. I'm trying to kind of map out exactly how I can do this. But I was worried that you might be able to see like the blue or the clear um, plastic through like the seams in between the shells. So I'm just gonna go over the whole egg with ivory paint first to give myself a nice background for our seashells especially the blue on here. Now you'll see that there is like a flat edge there on the bottom, which is not ideal, but actually in the end, I don't think you can probably even tell, but that can always be your back, right? Because we're gonna kind of have this Easter egg stand up and just be a beautiful like shell display, honestly, it turned out so nice but I need a base. So I'm just gonna use one of these little dollar spot signs from Target. It can be whatever you've got, but this is just a nice size. It's perfect size for this egg and it's kind of heavy. So I think it's gonna look nice. Um, I did, it was white, but I just painted it ivory to kind of go with my coastal decor. And we have a super easy little base for our egg. I thought I should go ahead and attach it to the base now 
before I start attaching the seashells. So I'm just using hot glue and gluing that down with the flat side there on the back. And you definitely have to hold it until it's dry. <laughs> Now to kind of reinforce that joint right there and add another little coastal touch, I'm just using some Dollar Tree um, brown rope and hot gluing that all the way around. And it looks nice, but it's also gonna make that a little bit stronger. Now I think we have a pretty good starting place for this little shell egg. Just using my little cake decorating tool from Dollar Tree there to avoid burning myself. And now I think we have the perfect base. So we can start building with seashells. I'm gonna start at the bottom and just glue the first one on. And then I'm just gonna keep building. I'm making like the shells kind of go in the same direction, slightly overlapping them. So I'm not just gluing them to the egg, but I'm also gluing them to the next shell. And I'm just gonna keep going around on that bottom base, doing them this direction, just kind of upright. And then I'm gonna kind of start in the center in the back to kind of make sure that I get these spaced out properly. It's pretty forgiving, um, but if a shell doesn't fit, just try another one for sure. And it's kind of like doing a driftwood project or something like that. I always kind of compare it to a puzzle, but I'm kind of using different colors, but mainly these little scallop sized shells. And I was trying to determine if I should keep going in that pattern or if I should flip them upside down for the next row. And I really like the look of flipping them upside down for the next row because it kind of gives it like a really cool, like kind of tortoise shell vibe. It looks cool. And we're gonna start with that second row there. And same thing, just kind of going around, overlapping. I'm overlapping the bottom row slightly too, just because I thought, you know, it's gonna cover more and, um, I'm gluing it to more than one surface, so it's gonna help them stay on. But actually, this held up really well with hot glue. Again, when I get to the back, I'm kind of making sure that I have them kind of spaced out properly. So they'll all fit. And I'm not too worried about the back as much as I am the front. And so for the third row, again, I'm doing it the same as I did the bottom row. And see how they kind of all sandwich together when you flip the direction of the shelves? And then I'm just gonna speed this way up and we're gonna glue these all the way up to the top of the egg. I often don't craft with um, just predominantly shells like this. I know a lot of people do, but a lot of times with shell projects, they can kind of end up looking kind of unprofessional or tacky, but this little coastal egg just turned out Beautiful, one of my favorite Easter DIYs I've ever done. And I kind of like the fact that I'm varying colors and such. I kind of want it to look really random. And again, um, just again, every row, just flipping the direction and keep working my way up this giant egg. And I think that this is probably the only giant egg that they have at the Dollar Tree. I can't remember seeing another kind, but the plastic probably works better with the amount of hot glue that I'm using. Like if it were foam or something like that, that would be really melting. <laughs> so again, just kind of putting a puzzle together, a small one next to a big one, just trying it. If it fits, I glue it on. If it doesn't fit, I grab another one. Sometimes you need two like that just to fill it in. And I'm not too worried about being able to see through because we did paint the ivory paint underneath and we we're getting almost all of it covered up here at the top. And then one big shell on the top, it's gonna finish it out perfectly. And we have a little seashell Easter egg. If you do have like any hot glue that seeped out, you can always clean that up a little bit with a heat gun. It's gonna make it look really pretty. And there's our little Easter egg. 
I did have a few gaps between my shells that I thought were would look a little bit better brown. So I do go in there with a little tan paint and just kind of distress some of the um, larger light gaps in between. But that step's probably not necessary. It turned out so cute though. Here's our little Easter egg made out of seashells. Isn't it pretty? So you can't really tell that the back is a little bit flatter, but it doesn't matter because it's kind of the back of my display anyway. And this is how it looks in my house for Easter. And I love how some of the shells are kind of, they really look natural. This was such a fun DIY to make. I love crafting with shells. And this is how it turned out, our giant Easter egg made of shells. Now I thought we could make a, another little Easter sign. I'm going to again use one of those little chalkboards from the Dollar Tree because I love those. They're my favorite. I always try to stock up on those. I love a good plain rectangular sign that's nice and thick. Now, this is my favorite kind of removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. This is the light blue with the palm fronds all over. So beautiful and tropical, but I love it. I think it's going to be really pretty for Easter. And it's just that peel and stick removable wallpaper, um, just like a big old sticker, and you can cover up whatever's on your existing sign. The chalkboards are great because there's no glitter or anything like that. That's going to provide any kind of raised areas. We're going to get a nice flat surface. I'm just attaching that down. It is like I always cut it. Sometimes I cut it. Sometimes I don't. But I always make it bigger than the sign and then just go around the edges with that sanding sponge again to give myself that perfect clean cut. Now for this DIY, I wanted to make a coastal Easter egg. And so kind of a different version than we did before with the little coastal Easter bunny. Um, this one I wanted to do like a seagrass Easter egg. So that looks really good as a background. This is the egg that I'm going to use the egg sign from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use that as a base to make a little coastal Easter egg. It's kind of cute as is. I like that white kind of distressed finish on there. But we're going to cover ours with seagrass. Now I have, um, this is one of those little Easter purses from the Dollar Tree. I really like the tan. I really think that gives you that nice seagrass feel. And so I'm trying to determine how I can use this little bag to cover this big egg, but we're going to make it work. Now, last year at the Target Dollar Spot, I was able to get this kind of a bag in a larger size for like $3, and that works really well for crafting as well. But I just cut it in half like I normally would. It's going to give me a nice big piece here that's going to cover at least half of our Easter egg, right? And then I can use the other half to cover the rest. Just a quick, easy little hack to make a little seagrass project. I'm just going to cut off the top part of that bag, trying to get a straight edge. As you can see, it does kind of, um, the edges do kind of bow the way that it is wound around. But we're going to work with it. So I cut off that top row that was kind of uneven to kind of straighten it up a little bit. And then we're going to start gluing this down. I'm just going to use a nice a thick layer of Mod Podge because it is kind of still like a fabric. And I really didn't want like hot glue to seep in between the holes in the seagrass. So just smoothing that down. It's okay that it's a little bit larger. I can always trim it when it is dry. And then I'm trying to get this edge as straight as possible too. As you can see, there's just a little bit of bowing just from the design of the bag. But we're going to try to make it work. I did have another purse handy. And so I thought maybe if I use the back of this one, I can get a little bit of straighter line. I can't say that this bag was any better <laughs> than the one that I just kind of set aside, but I'm trying to get a straight edge. And I kind of cut the sides off on that one as well, so I can kind of move it around a little bit. 
but again, it's not going to line up perfectly, but that's okay. We can always decorate that part of our Easter egg and kind of cover that up and kind of disguise it, kind of make it look like it's one big piece of seagrass. So I got it as close as I can get it, just trimming that down so it will fit on there perfectly. And then we can Mod Podge that piece down as well. So I get it on there. You're going to have to let it dry a little bit before you can start trimming it. And I also thought it might be better if I did a coat of Mod Podge over the top since this is kind of a heavy fabric that we're attaching. And I think that did help secure it and make it like, you know, a little bit more permanent. But that's how you can use the little bags like that to kind of piece it together on a bigger project like that. You just kind of have to work with it. <laughs> and I am just now trimming that all around the edges of our Easter egg. And we have a cute little seagrass Easter egg for this sign. Loving the texture, and I think that's going to look really good against this great wallpaper. I'm just going to go ahead and poke the holes back in this sign through the wallpaper. I like to use a little weeder from the Dollar Tree. It works great for that. And the egg fits perfectly on that chalkboard size rectangle. Just going to attach it to the wallpaper with hot glue. And kind of center it that right on there. And then we can decorate this little Easter egg for Easter. I thought starfish would be perfect because it's going to kind of cover that seam right there down the middle. These are actually starfish that I get on Amazon, but they're almost exactly the same size as the one from Dollar Tree. You could totally use those as well if you have some. And they should be coming back to the store soon with the short living line, I hope. I think so because they're available on the website right now. Just trying to figure out which way looks best because they're not quite symmetrical. And gluing a row of three little starfish across our little Easter egg. Now I wanted to do like some squiggle lines and stuff like that to decorate it as well. I'm just going to go ahead and reattach my hanger at this point. Just using the twine and tying the knot in the front. And then for the little squiggle lines, I'm just using Dollar Tree rope. This is kind of like the skinnier rope. And just doing a little squiggle, kind of one section at a time, hot gluing that to our Easter egg. And in my last um, Easter DIY video, I did something kind of similar with the white rope on the like brown or burlap egg and um, looked super cute. So this is kind of the opposite, the brown rope on the seagrass. But I think that looks really cute for an Easter egg decoration. We're gonna keep with that same pattern right here on the bottom of the egg, doing little squiggly rope lines on here as well. It's so cute and fun. I love using those tropical Wallpaper, I've used it for Christmas, I've used it for Easter, I've used it for so many holidays. Then I wanted to finish it off with a little, little cute little Easter bow. I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree burlap in the brown, and it's a little too thick for what I wanted to do, so I just cut it in half and made a thinner um, ribbon. And then some of this little flowery turquoise Easter ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to make a simple little expo here for our little Easter egg sign. Also using some of the zigzag burlap. I love like all three of the designs of those little burlap ribbons from the Dollar Tree. They're so cute. And we're just going to secure that with a zip tie. So easy and so cute for a little Easter bow for a little Easter egg sign. Just going to kind of trim them down, kind of make them all about the same length and clean it up a little bit. Then we're going to attach this cute little expo. I thought it'd be really cute up here in the corner, right above our little coastal Easter egg. Just kind of gluing and arranging that little expo on there. 
And then I thought one of these little wood bunny rabbits from the Dollar Tree would be really cute to kind of finish that bow off and to cover up the little zip tie that's on there. Just trying to make sure this bow is going the right direction. And then we can just hot glue that on there. I wasn't sure if I wanted to paint or stain that little bunny. I did go ahead and glue it on there natural like that. But then I thought it probably would look really cute stained. So I'm just going to use a makeup sponge and some antique wax by Waverly and do a really quick little stain job on our little Easter bunny. And a cute little detail for our little Easter egg. And there it is, our little seagrass Easter egg. I love it. I love the little starfish on there and that tropical vibe background with that wallpaper. So cute. I love how this turned out. Our little seagrass Easter egg. So coastal and fun. Okay, this is the bag that I was talking about from the Target Dollar Spot. It is a much larger bag. It's like kind of like a beach bag. Um, and it's just going to give me a bigger surface, kind of the same effect. Actually, it wasn't $3. It was actually $5. Little woven tote bag. But you could probably do this with the little bags that we use from the Dollar Tree if you pieced it together. And that's kind of, uh, see how similar they are? The one from the Dollar Tree does have like the little cutouts in it. But that one was kind of more full. Now I want to do a seagrass bunny rabbit, like a shelf sitter, but I don't really have like an existing sign from the Dollar Tree that was in the shape that I wanted. I wanted it to kind of look like this, like a little like peeps bunny kind of thing. And so I'm using that little bunny that you see there just as um, inspiration. That's off one of the little Dollar Tree signs. I use that to make a garland. And I'm just using some of that foam board from the Dollar Tree and a Sharpie. And I'm trying <laughs> my best to sketch that out. You're not going to be able to see any of this mess. Um, so it's okay if you have to try a couple times to kind of get kind of a symmetric bunny rabbit. But then we're just going to kind of cut that out. I'm not a big fan of cutting um, the you know, the foam board or the cardboard and stuff like that. But this was a pretty easy shape, so I think we can pull it off. And you can also do this too. Um, if you can't find any of like the wooden signs that you might need for a DIY, you can kind of make your own thing as well. So I just wanted it to be just a really simple bunny rabbit standing straight up with little ears straight up. And so that's what we're going to do. And then cover that entire bunny rabbit with seagrass. Now I kind of made the bunny rabbit the perfect size for this. Um, it's going to fit perfectly with the size of the bag. And again, we're just going to cut this apart. And cut a strip of that material out to cover our bunny rabbit. And it has great handles as well, which would be great for crafting too. Now I want to cover like the entire bunny rabbit with this material and so I'm going to kind of make it larger than my little foam board piece. I was trying to get the rest of that handle off there because I was afraid it was going to interfere and I did that and then I'm just going to use the sharpie that we used before to kind of draw on the sea glass where, seagrass where I want to cut it um, just a little bit bigger than my bunny. That way it's going to kind of sandwich that foam board inside. That's just going to be kind of the structure to make it stand up. And now we can just go around and cut on our lines and cut out that little bunny shape. And don't worry if you can see the marker because I'm just going to use that side as my inside piece. You won't be able to see it. Now I wanted the back of my project to be kind of finished too. So I'm also using just some 
burlap that I got. This is a burlap roll from Walmart. And I'm kind of using that existing seagrass as a stencil. And we're going to go ahead and cut out a burlap back as well. And that's just going to be the back of my little stand-up bunny. It's just going to make it look more finished. But I thought I would go ahead and measure that so I can cut that out. Now it's going to make it easier to put this all together. We can sandwich our little foam board piece in between the little seagrass piece and the burlap. Just like that and see how I have like probably about a half an inch border all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and secure this together with hot glue on the foam board attaching that to the seagrass. And then I still have plenty enough room around the edges to attach the seagrass to the burlap back. So we're just going to go ahead and lay the burlap that we cut down into the bunny shape as well. And honestly, it'd be really cute if you wanted to do a burlap bunny like this as well. You can kind of see through it though, so you're going to have to make sure that your foam board underneath is pretty cut, pretty even. And so I'm just hot gluing all around the edges, also hot gluing it down to the foam board. Kind of sandwiching that in there. And of course with burlap, you're gonna get a little bit of fraying around the edges. And so I'm just gonna give it a quick trim, but I am gonna finish the edges, but I do need them to be pretty symmetrical and even. But I don't wanna leave it all exposed like that. So I'm gonna use some of this decorative nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner kind, like the nine and a half foot, I think. And I thought that would be the perfect border around. It's going to kind of sandwich um, all that together and cover up all of my exposed or rough edges over here. And it's also going to provide like just another coastal touch. So I'm just going to hot glue that little rope all the way around the bunny rabbit to frame him out. And I did cut it right between the two ears because I was afraid it was going to be really hard to go around that corner. So I just cut that down to go straight down into its ear. And then I can just start with that piece that I just cut off and get it close down in there as I can. It almost causes them to touch a little bit there, but I got it to fit. And then just wrapping that same rope all the way around until we get to the bottom of our bunny rabbit. Now I want this little seagrass bunny rabbit to stand up. I'm gonna make it like a shelf sitter decor. And so I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree sign for the bottom of the base. And this is the sign I'm gonna use. It's just another one of those long board signs from the Dollar Tree. I think just leftover from Valentine's Day, but it can be whatever. I love the fact that it was blue though. It was kind of the perfect color. I kind of measure about how wide I need it to be, and then I just cut it down to size. And then I want my little bunny rabbit to kind of stand up on the little blue base, just like that. Super cute. I did kind of want something um, to kind of be able to attach it to the sign though. So I'm just using, this is like one of those like hot dog um, skewers that they have in the summer at the Dollar Tree, just a, any kind of a dowel. I just kind of cut that down to size and I thought that would be good because I kind of have like that open seam along the bottom between the burlap and the seagrass. So I just hot glue that right into the center of my base and then I hot glue on top of the little dowel and I just sit my bunny rabbit right on top, sandwiching that in between my burlap and my seagrass and also gluing it to the bottom of my foam board. Since it's made out of foam board and fabric, it's not real heavy, so I don't think it's gonna be too hard um, to keep it standing there. But now to finish off that loose edge around the bottom, I'm gonna use that same rope that we bordered all around and I'm gonna glue that on. That's also gonna help glue it to the base and provide a little bit more stability. And then I'm gonna go around and do it on the back as well, cause you can't be too careful.
And then I thought our little bunny needed a bunny tail. This is just a pom-pom I had sitting around, I think from craft kit, maybe from Target, but you can use whatever you can find. There's lots of these available from Dollar Tree and all different kinds of colors. Love them. Little bunny tail. And we're just gonna hot glue this right here down at the bottom of our bunny bum. And then we're gonna be looking at the back of this little seagrass bunny rabbit. I love that blue base. It was the perfect color for this DIY. Then I thought we could decorate it a little bit more with some of this happy Easter ribbon. So pretty in this turquoise color. I'm just gonna tie a simple little bow where you can see the happy Easter on the loops and tails. And then we can just decorate like one of the little ears of our little bunny rabbit here. Just cutting my tails down evenly. And then we can just hot glue that on. Super cute. And a fun little detail for our little bunny rabbit. You could also do a bow around its neck if you wanted. I didn't want anything too frilly because I really liked that coastal feel we had going on there. And then I was trying to see if a little starfish would look really cute on there as well. Just to add a little coastal vibe. And so we're just going to glue that on there. It's a little larger than I would normally use on a bow that size, but it's kind of fun and whimsical. And again, that's just a little starfish that I get on Amazon. And this is how it turned out. Our little seagrass Easter bunny. So cute. I love all of the little coastal touches and colors. And I think it would be really cute too if you only had burlap to cover it. That'd be really beachy too. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I also have a Facebook page. I have the link to both below. I would love it if you'd come follow me. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube. Now let's keep going with more Easter DIYs. This next one, I wanted to do a coastal little chick sign for Dollar Tree. So we're going to use some blue pebbles and a little wood chick from the Dollar Tree. And you know I love these little chalkboard signs. So in one of the little chalkboard signs, I wanted it to be rectangular. And we're going to kind of give it that same background that we did on the little burlap Easter bunny. I'm going to kind of hang these together so they're kind of a set. But the little burlap bunny is going to look totally different than this little chick. But I like their backgrounds to kind of match as well. So I just peel and stick that removable wallpaper on there and use a sanding sponge to cut off the excess. Just a quick, easy way to DIY because you're not going to have to worry about painting it and covering like the image that was already on there. I just absolutely love this stuff. Now I wanted to do like just a completely different effect on this one. I wanted it to be a little blue chick for Easter, but you know, I think they have the pebbles in different colors. So you could always kind of do um, different colors, I think as well. So this is the little chick that we're gonna decorate. It's super cute. And I thought we could cover it with those little light blue pebbles from the Dollar Tree. I thought it'd be a really cool technique for this but I'm gonna need a thick glue. So I like to pick up this tacky glue from the Dollar Tree because it's nice, thick, and gooey. Works great for applications like this. And I'm gonna go all over my little baby chick and do a thick layer of that tacky glue. And then we can simply glue the little blue pebbles all over. Aren't they pretty? I think it's like the perfect like coastal blue color. Now you're gonna kind of make a little bit of a mess when you do this, so I would advise putting something down first. <laughs> and I'm just kind of sprinkling that all over, kind of pushing that down into the tacky glue. And this is gonna be hanging on the wall, so I wanna make sure that they're all really nice and secure on there. And now I got smart and put down a cutting board. <laughs> And I'm gonna go all the way around the edges with the blue rocks as well. As you can tell, there's a lot of those pebbles in just one package. I'm kind of picking them up, putting them on the edges, trying to fill in the edges of our chick as much as we can. 
I don't really want to glue the pebbles to the side, the edges of it, because I do want a crisp line to kind of make it still look like a little baby chick. Now to further secure it, I'm going to use some of the spray glue from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just going to spray all over, kind of give a, like a glue from the bottom and a glue from the top. It's going to help secure them together into each other. Now you're going to have to let this dry for a while to make sure it's good and stuck. But I did notice that I did have a few edges that did have a few gaps. So I'm just going to go around with some glue and kind of try to fill in any gaps I have around the edges. And then you can use your heat gun for this. The Probably the best way is just to let it sit. I did go over it with more spray adhesive. And I did use my heat gun. And then I kind of went around all the edges just to pull off any stray little pebbles that were kind of stuck to the side to kind of clean up that shape again. Easy peasy. You're going to want to do that step now before you attach it to the sign. So I thought I would go ahead and reattach my hanger for my little chalkboard. So just poking a hole in front and we're going to tie this back on easy peasy. The only difficult part is probably trying to thread it through. <laughs> and I like to tie my knots on the front. I find that the sign always hangs better that way for me. And here's our little pebble blue chick for Easter. Isn't that cute? I think the color is perfect for Easter and I love all the texture of the pebbles. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue it down um, without trying to turn it upside down quite yet because I wasn't sure if it was completely dry at this point. Then I wanted to decorate it a little bit. I, I have kind of an empty corner up here above my chick and I have um, part of that purse left over that seagrass purse from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna kind of cut like just a little square down, just like kind of a little background and then attach like a little sand dollar on there for a little coastal touch. And I think this is just a sand dollar that I got on Amazon, about the same exact size as the ones from the Dollar Tree though. Just going to attach that little seagrass purse down here to the corner. And this is going to help coordinate with that bunny rabbit that we made earlier as well because it's going to match the little sand dollar tail that was on there. Super cute and a fun little decoration for our little Easter chick. Now along the edges, I thought it'd be cute to kind of frame it out just to kind of make the shape of the little Easter egg chick pop a little bit more. So I'm just using some of that thicker twine from Walmart and I'm going to simply just hot glue that around all the edges of our little chick just to provide another little coastal de detail, but I think it also helped um, really show off the shape of the chick so you can totally tell what it is. And I love, like, I love, I made like a, I think I made something similar for Thanksgiving for a turkey. It turned out really cute. I love the blue pebbles. Now I wanted to make a cute little expo for our sign. So again, I'm using burlap from the Dollar Tree cut in half, some blue Happy Easter ribbon, and then some of this little lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree as well, just for fun. Going to kind of do the Happy Easter on top and just do a very simple little expo. Just using a zip tie to secure that. And I kind of use zip ties on all these DIYs, so it does kind of make them coordinate a little bit better. And I love expos because they're so easy to do. Now to cover up the little zip tie on this one, I'm going to use one of these little wood chicks um, from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to stain that with Antique Wax by Waverly. And it's going to go with the cute little chick that we have on the front of this sign. So I think it would look really cute, like just kind of in the center right there, just to kind of top the sign off. And it kind of overlaps our little sand dollar decor on there as well. And then hot gluing the little wooden chick on top. 
I think this turned out really fun for Easter. I just love this DIY. What do you guys think about our little pebble chick? Now, I kind of wanted to put a little grass on the bottom. Um, so I'm using some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, and we're just going to do a thin layer of grass to kind of simulate, or moss to simulate grass along the bottom. I like to do that for my spring DIYs. I think it makes them look really springy. And don't worry if it looks a little crazy along the bottom because once you get it all glued down, you can just go in and trim it up and make it look nice. And that's the final step. This is how our little pebble Easter chick turned out for Easter. Isn't he cute? And again, make sure you let that dry so the pebbles stay stuck, but actually every single one stayed glued down. So here it is, the cute little pebble Easter chick. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to do like a coastal carrot. So I'm gonna use one of these little wood carrot signs from the Dollar Tree, and I kind of wanted to make it into a shelf sitter, and I thought driftwood would be, would be perfect. We can make a driftwood carrot. I like to pick up this driftwood vase filler available from Target. It's normally like $10 a box, but Definitely watch out for it because it does go on sale a lot throughout the year and I always try to stock up on it when it does. I love to craft with it though because it's easily available from Target and um, they're very flat pieces of driftwood and so they're really easy to glue down and craft with. And so I thought we would just kind of just start hot gluing those to our little wooden carrot, kind of using the back of the carrot here where it's nice and flat. And just kind of starting off by doing the easy part, we're gonna kind of frame around the edges. And again, when you're putting together driftwood, it's exactly like putting together a puzzle. If a piece isn't gonna work, just try another piece and keep working together until you're gonna get good coverage. I love doing driftwood projects. I've done so many of them on here on this channel and they always just turn out so fun. And I think this is a nice little surprise for a coastal Easter decoration. So I got the carrot part all framed out. So now we're just gonna go in and just start gluing pieces in the center. I'm trying to kind of work the same direction. Some of the pieces are really large like that. So kind of take advantage of that. That's gonna cover a lot of area. And um, you can always overlap them as needed and kind of glue them to themselves. Just trying to get all the area of the carrot covered. Kind of in a neat pattern. Now for the greenery part, kind of the same thing. I'm kind of just kind of working straight out in directions like the leaves would go up and down like that. Just trying to find like pieces that are gonna fit well. The longer pieces in the middle, maybe the, some of the shorter pieces along the edges. And we're kind of working in that same direction that we did on the carrot too. Just hot gluing that all over until I have really good coverage. I wanna stand this up on my shelf for Easter. So I will make a base for this, but basically trying to get all of the driftwood on there first. And if you can't get a piece quite small enough, you can kind of trim these down a little bit to size. Now, it's very light for a driftwood, so to give it more character, we are going to stain it with some Antique Wax by Waverly. And I'm just using a chunky brush, trying to go in there and give it a little bit more color, bring out that detail of that driftwood, and just kind of make it look a little bit nicer. You can kind of go as dark as you want with this. I was just kind of trying to give it a little bit of warmth. And if you get a little bit too much on there, you can always go over it with a baby wipe to kind of wipe off the excess. Now this is like um, one of those long signs we've been using today from the Dollar Tree. Just a spare piece that I had from cutting it down to size. I thought it would be a nice base. And so I'm just gonna paint it all over with some ivory acrylic, just to kind of give a nice plain color to this. It's gonna kind of match my ivory shelves that we're gonna display it on. And then I kind of want my carrot to be standing kind of like upside down, kind of on an angle. 
So I'm just going to try to start hot gluing that to the base. It's probably not going to be sturdy enough with just this L shape, um, but I can always keep building it out on the back a little bit. But I kind of wanted to get it lined up exactly how I would sit it there. And then I just kind of need another piece of wood here on the back. And I do have enough room for one of these little wood cubes from the Dollar Tree. And so I had it handy, so I'm just going to use that. But you could use like Jenga blocks or whatever you have. You're just going to need something a little sturdier if you're going to make your stand up like this. Otherwise, you could attach a hanger. And this would be really cute hanging Easter decor as well. Now I got it to that point and I said, I don't know how much this looks like a carrot since it's brown. <laughs> so I mixed up some pumpkin orange, like acrylic paint with water and made an orange stain. And I'm just gonna go over the carrot part of the driftwood with that orange stain, leaving uh, the greenery part, that brown color, just to kind of give it a little bit more carrot feel, if you know what I mean. But it's still got that antique wax under it, so it still kind of coordinates together. But I kind of like that effect, and that's how that turned out. And here's my little driftwood carrot for Easter. Definitely fun, unique, and whimsical. I'm telling you, I can make any, any holiday a coastal holiday decoration. I might need to find a new source for driftwood though because my target just discontinued it. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to make like a giant bunny rabbit decor for my wall. So I'm going to start with one of these bunny rabbit face wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and some of this 11 foot nautical rope cotton from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could like weave around that pattern of the wreath form to make a really cute like rope woven little bunny head. So I'm gonna start right here at the top of the bunny head. I just attached that to the back of the wreath form and I'm gonna weave that through. How I'm gonna weave this is like a traditional woven where I go under that middle row and then go over the bottom and then I'm going to come back through like this. I'm going to show you slowly on the first ones to make sure that you see how I weave this. And then I'm going to go over instead of under. And then pull it around and over the top. <laughs> so you're just going to weave it back and forth like that with rope. And when it's really long like this, when you're just kind of starting out, it's a little squirrely um, to get it to work. But once you get going on it, it gets a lot easier. So like under the middle one and then over the middle one. And then you just keep reversing that pattern. And we're going to go all the way around the bunny head like that. It does take a little bit of time to weave these, but they turn out so beautiful. I love this one. So as you're doing it, you can see that different sections do have the little crossbars. You're going to want to keep it as tight as you can so whenever you go through a row you know kind of pull it back keep it tight try to fit as many rows as you can before you get to the end of a section like that it's just going to make it look nicer and in the end product you can kind of see you know the metal through there but that kind of just shows off the weaving pattern so it just really kind of adds some fun detail to it so as you can see, it's going to get way faster and I'm going to speed this way up because it does take a little bit of time to complete this. But let me show you about how far one of the rope goes around this little bunny head wreath. Just about right there. Now we can hot glue those two ends down to the back and then start a new package. And when you start a new package, just make sure you keep going with that same pattern that you finished off on. And you'll never be able to really tell where you start and stop. Now I wanted to do something different for the bunny ears than just the rope. So I thought it'd be really fun to use some of those wood bead garlands from the Dollar Tree. You could use any wood beads that you have. Um, I used to get them on Amazon all the time until um, Dollar Tree started hooking me up. but 
I just cut one of the bunny ears off right there at the end so that we can put the wood bead on the little bunny ears. And I'm just gonna leave them like that natural color. I think that looks really nicely with that kind of ivory rope from the Dollar Tree. And it looks really nice and coastal for Easter. So I'm just gonna start putting those on the little bunny ear right here at the corner. It is kind of a tight bend, but you can kind of open that up to make that a little easier to get around because you can always bend that back. Once you get all the little wood beads on there, we're just gonna fill up the little ears with wood beads, both of them. So super easy, just taking them off that and popping them all on. Super fun way to bead your little bunny ears. And I've seen some people use like wrap the rope, um, like unwind the rope and wrap it around like the ears, but I love the beaded look. It really makes it look high end. Now, when you get to the end, um, I'm going to hot glue that down. I've got it turned upside down where I can hot glue that back to the frame. And I think that's pretty secure. I'm gonna do a little bit more hot glue to make sure. And then I'm gonna take um, another strand of that would-be garland, do the same thing over here. You kinda need to just kinda pop the one end off. It comes off kinda easily. Um, you don't even really need to cut it. Just kind of pull it back and forth and just open that up. We're gonna fill that little ear up with wood beads as well. Now I told you I was gonna do a giant bunny for my wall. So this is actually just kind of half of the bunny um, cause we're gonna like make a really large um, Easter decor piece for my wall. And this is what we're gonna use for the rest of the, bit, the body of the bunny, we're gonna use one of the egg reefs. It makes the perfect size. And so I want it to be the same feel as the bunny head. So we're gonna use that same white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, and we are going to weave the body. Now you'll notice the difference between the Easter Bunny had three wires, and this one has four. So keep that in mind. You're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna go like on this one, I'm gonna go over, under, right? And then the next one I'll go over, under. So you're still alternating the pattern, but there is some more weaving involved when you get to like a four line like this, but I wasn't sure if I would get the same effect since I'm always so used to doing it with three, but it definitely did um, and it looks really cool. So. We are just gonna keep alternating that pattern and wrapping this rope all the way around this little egg wreath form. And a pro tip, whenever you're weaving with this Dollar Tree rope, be sure to leave the tape on the end because you're putting that through um, lots of wire there and it's gonna get all frayed out if you go ahead and take that tape off. I guess that's kind of why it's there. So that's about how far one package of rope goes on the egg form. This would be really cute if you wanted to just do a rope egg as well. You could always decorate your little rope egg. And you know, this is the longer um, rope, but again, it is also thinner. So you're gonna get, you know, different results if you use the wider white rope. But I always start and stop on the back just continuing that same pattern until we go all the way around. I thought this would be a really cute body to attach to the little rope head that we did before. And then we can do like, it can be the back of the bunny, we can do like a little bunny bum. So we got it all filled up, hot gluing the last rope to the bottom. And now we need like a giant bunny tail. So I thought we would make our own. I'm gonna use this jute cord from Walmart. This is a little thicker than the one that you're gonna get at Dollar Tree, but you could always use that one as well. I just kinda need something big, so I'm just gonna use the container um, that I had laying around and just wrap that around a whole bunch of times, kinda like we're just doing a giant like tassel, right? You can see I used quite a bit of twine, got a nice circular pattern like that, then take another piece of twine that I cut off and tie that down right there in the middle. What we're gonna do is just make a giant pom-pom. So I just use my scissors and I cut all the loops on this side. 
And I love the effect of using the jute cord instead of yarn. Really gives you a nice rustic feel. And then we're gonna cut all of the loops on the other side. And as you can see, this is a big poofy bunny tail because this is a big bunny. And just kind of work with it until it looks like a ball shape. And then we can attach that to the bottom of this bunny. Isn't that fun? Um, just because of the size of this, you're probably not gonna be able to find a pom-pom this large, so you're probably definitely gonna have to make one. But I love the brown color and the kind of the rope on rope we got going on there. So I just hot glue that to the bottom. And you can always trim off any little loose ones that you think might be a little too long, but it's okay for it to look a little bit crazy. And now we just need to attach our little bunny body to our bunny head. So I'm just using a little bit of twine, tying that to the top of the egg wreath form. And then I'm just gonna tie that to the bottom of the bunny head, trying to kind of find the perfect center place to place that and tie those together. And this is really big. I'm gonna show you kind of like the zoomed out version of this on my wall so you can kind of see the scale of this DIY. This would be really cute on a front door as well. I kind of have a weird wall in my house and I think it's gonna look great on that. Now to kind of make just a little bow for the neck, I'm just gonna use Dollar Tree rope and the brown rope and tie a little bow here. Another little fun coastal rope detail and it kind of like makes that, kind of blends that like little joint together between the head and the body. Super easy, super fun. And this is how it looks. I wanted to show you how big this is. I have this weird little wall in my entryway and it is nice and large, but I love it. I love how the wood bead and all the different ropes and jutes and everything go nicely together. And I think it looks nice and coastal as well because we're using all of those natural colors and all of that rope. I think rope always looks really coastal. Isn't that cute? I love that DIY. Okay, our next DIY, we're gonna use one of these little foam bunnies from the Dollar Tree. Um, and I thought we could do a little sand bunny. You know, I love everything to be coastal. I love me a good sand castle, but we're gonna try to make a sand bunny. So um, I just put down a metal pan from the Dollar Tree to catch the mess. And we're gonna use some of the brown sand from the Dollar Tree. You could always use white for this as well. And um, I'm gonna Mod Podge sand all over. Now I'm just kind of using Mod Podge just cause it's gonna be a little bit lighter. I don't think I'm gonna need anything thicker than that. You could always use school glue as well. Basically went over half of the bunny with the Mod Podge and then just sprinkling the sand all over. Doing a sand project like this is so easy when you already have like just a plain white base. You're not worried about covering up any colors or anything. So I just flip it over, put Mod Podge on the other side and sprinkle sand on this side of the bunny as well. I'm gonna stand it up and continue sprinkling sand all over the bunny head. Gotta be careful if you're drying it with a heat gun though because it is styrofoam so you don't want it to melt. So very gently giving it a quick dry and then just kind of using some of the leftover sand to try to cover up his ears a little bit better. Trying to cover up any of the white styrofoam that you can still see through. And I don't want to kind of mess up what I've already got going on. So I give it a quick dry. Then to help it stay down, I'm going to use some more of that spray glue from Dollar Tree and just kind of spray glue, then do another layer of sand. The reason I like to switch to spray glue is because you can't really use a brush at this point. It's gonna take off all the sand. So I flip it over and I spray glue this side and do a second coat of sand on this side to make sure all that styrofoam is covered. And basically that's the only thing we're gonna do to this Easter bunny. I just wanted a really cute little sand bunny to go with my coastal Easter decor. And I'm just making sure his face, you kind of can do one side at a time, but then you kind of have to do the top as well. 
and spraying him with one more coat of that glue to make sure all of that sand stays put. Oh, and there's our little sand bunny. Don't drop it. <laughs> and this is how he turned out. Super whimsical, super fun, definitely coastal for Easter. It actually looks like something we would try to make at the beach. We always try to go to the beach for holidays and decorate the sand. <laughs> I love him. Okay, our next DIY, I wanted to make some like nautical rope eggs. So we're going to use some of this. This is the thicker rope from the Dollar Tree, the six foot. And the reason I'm using this one is because I'm going to unwind it into thirds. So just removing the plastic at the end. We're just going to simply unwind it. It's going to give us a thinner rope, which is going to be great to cover some Dollar Tree eggs with. These are kind of some of their bigger plastic ones. Doesn't really matter what color they are. Um, the rope is going to cover them pretty well. The most time consuming part of this project is just probably unwinding the rope. So I just start with a little bit of hot glue at the top and then we're just gonna simply start winding these around the eggs. You do have to use hot glue um, here and there just to make sure that it is gonna stay put. But mainly winding is gonna cover most of the egg. And I just want to do a really cute egg display. I found something at the thrift store at Goodwill that's going to be really cute to display this egg. But you could always display your rope eggs and anything. You could do an Easter basket. You could do a basket of any kind. You could do a bowl. Be really cute. And just a simple way to DIY your own high look, high end looking Easter eggs. Especially when you start getting to the tips, you're going to have to start like using maybe a little bit more hot glue to make sure it stays in place. And you're going to want to keep the different rows kind of tight together so you don't see any of that color underneath. And I like doing it with this size egg. Um, I haven't tried it with like the smaller one, but you might need a smaller string if you're going to use a smaller egg. And we're just going to keep covering it till you can't see any more of the plastic. And then trimming that off and gluing that down in there. Super cute. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with our other little Easter eggs. And then I'll show you how I'm going to display these for Easter. So we have four wrapped rope eggs. And then I found the greatest thing at Goodwill um, on clearance. It is a little box of grass. So I thought that would be perfect for Easter because it looked like you having an egg hunt and you're hiding little eggs in the grass. So that's what it looks like. Just grass in a galvanized metal pot. Then I kind of wanted to add a little bit of a coastal decor to that um, galvanized metal. So I'm just going to use some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and just kind of line that around the edges. But it was a little too thick, so I'm just gonna kind of cut that down and make a thinner ribbon. I love DIYing with this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I often find it in the fall at Dollar Tree, but I always try to stock up on it. Depending on my Dollar Tree, some Dollar Trees have it year round. And that way, some of the galvanized metal will still show through. We're just going to kind of hot glue this to the corner. And wrap that all the way around. I thought this really screamed Christmas. Otherwise, I don't know why I would really have like a box of grass sitting around. But maybe. Just cutting that down to size and gluing the other end, just pulling it tight all around all four sides of the little box of grass. And then we can just simply hide our little Easter eggs like right inside. So fun, and I think four is going to be like the perfect number. Just kind of have some straight up, some kind of tipping over. And then one more little coastal detail. I thought I would add just a little sand dollar that I got on Amazon. 
right on the front. And it screams Coastal Easter. Now, you could probably recreate this with the grass they have this year at Dollar Tree Plus. I've just recently used that for another DIY. The grass is not quite as long, but maybe if you did a smaller egg, I think it would give you about the same result. But I love displaying them in the grass for Easter. It looks just like a little Easter egg hunt. And covering the little eggs with rope really makes them look more high end, I think. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit that join button under the video. Okay, this next DIY, I wanna use these great eggs from the Dollar Tree and a Easter sign. This is an Easter sign I had left over because I used the cute little bunnies that were on the front to make a garland for my coffee bar. So I just kind of have the rectangular sign left over. It can be anything. I just wanted a rectangle, rectangle sign and something that I can put those great Easter eggs on. Now to cover it, I'm gonna use some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree in the white board. I love using this. I think it looks really coastal. I just peel and stick the wallpaper to the back of the sign. The reason I'm decorating the back instead of the front is because there was glitter on the other side and I didn't want any of those raised wood, or the, any of the raised words to stick up from the wallpaper. So I'm just gonna peel the back off and smooth that out. It's a great easy way to do a DIY, no paint or anything involved and you get great coverage. Now I did cut it a little bit larger than I needed and then I'm just taking a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and sanding it to give me a perfect cut along the edges. And they have this in all different kinds of patterns. All my Dollar Trees seem to be carrying it nowadays which really makes me happy because I love it. Now I like to sand mine to rough it up a little bit. Kind of uh, makes those lines not so dark and kind of makes it look a little bit more weathered a little bit more coastal. And then I just want to go in and poke holes back in it um, just so I'll be able to reattach a hanger to it. So just poking a hole through the removable wallpaper. And I like to use one of those weeders from the Dollar Tree. Um, those work great. And then this is the eggs that we're going to decorate. I think this is so cute. It's got like the little flower and polka dots on the side and the squiggly line egg in the middle. I'm not gonna hang this part, so I am just using a little spackle to fill in the holes on this. And so then we're gonna decorate it. I wanted to do um, some really beautiful, like coastal looking eggs for this sign with that white wood look background. So just using a scrap piece of burlap I had left over from Walmart, you could always use the bags from a Dollar Tree as well. I sketched the bottom and top of the egg with a Sharpie and then um, I couldn't really do the sides because there's three eggs together, but I could kind of, you know, kind of sketch out where I think the sides of the eggs were going to be from where I started. And then I'm just going to cut inside that Sharpie line to cut off any color and cut out a little burlap for the middle egg. I want to cover that one in burlap for sure. And um, there was little wood cutouts on top of the eggs, um, but what I'm gonna do is just uh, flip it over and decorate the other side. That way I don't have to worry about having to pop those off or paint around those or anything like that. So we're just gonna decorate the back of these eggs. And I'm gonna use Antique Wax by Waverly. You could always use a brown paint and water um, to make your own stain if you wanted, but I love the finish this gives me. And that raw wood from the Dollar Tree stains really well. So just going over it with a thin coat of Antique Wax by Waverly, and I get that at Walmart. When I get it all on there, I'm just gonna go over that with a paper towel to wipe off any of the excess and look at that beautiful wood grain. I'm gonna leave the two um, eggs on the outside, the wood, and then the middle one we're gonna cover with that burlap that we cut out. But I want mine to look a little bit more coastal, a little bit more like driftwood, so I do distress it heavily with some ivory acrylic and um, a baby wipe to see how that kinda gives me like a lighter finish. 
and makes it look a little bit more rustic. So this is that piece of burlap that we cut for the center egg and we're just gonna attach it to that center egg with a nice coat of Mod Podge. And it's kind of the same color as the stain on the sides, but you can tell that it's burlap, so you're gonna get a different texture. Just gonna use my little uh, brayer from uh, my Cricut to kind of smooth that down. And then I'm also gonna go over the top of the burlap with more Mod Podge just to make sure it's very saturated. I want this to stay down. And just making sure that's all covered. Anytime you get cut burlap, it's gonna fray a little bit, but that's okay. It kind of adds to the charm of this project. And again, you can always use that like synthetic burlap from the Dollar Tree bags and that won't fray at all. And so this side is gonna fit perfectly on this rectangular side. And we're gonna take advantage of those little raised areas on the back of the sign, because it gives us little spacers to add hot glue. And it's gonna kind of give me a 3D effect where the little eggs stick out a little bit further from the sign. So we're just gonna glue that down, making sure that it's nice and secure. And then I wanted to use some nautical rope, the six foot cotton rope from the Dollar Tree to start decorating our little coastal eggs. I didn't want it to be quite so thick though, so I'm just gonna unwind it into thirds and kind of recreate those little curvy lines that were on the other side that I liked, but we're gonna recreate it with this little curly rope. And you can see that the rope, once you unwind it, already has that little curly pattern because it's been, you know, kind of braided into a rope. And so I just kind of go with the natural pattern of it to give me a little squiggly line made out of rope. Looks really cute against that burlap. And before my hot glue dries, I just kind of shape it um, while I can. <laughs> and then I thought we would do another little squiggle line. Just do a squiggle line of hot glue and just follow along with that little curly pattern that's already in the rope. And you definitely do need to shape it once you get it glued on there to kind of give you a symmetric look. Then I thought we could decorate this using one of these silicone molds that I got on Amazon. I have these linked below in my Amazon shop and you can make anything with a little bit of hot glue. So I'm gonna make a seashell here just by filling that silicone mold with some hot glue. And I'm also going to make a little starfish. These are so easy to do. I just pop mine in my refrigerator or freezer and they set up in no time. Just try to make sure that you don't fill them too much because um, then you will have to trim off the overfill. But it's a great way to make little sea creatures like that. So I popped it in the freezer for just a couple of minutes and now we have a little starfish. We have a little seashell and we can decorate our little coastal Easter eggs with those. So I did overfill my starfish a tiny bit, so I'm just using some tiny scissors to trim that up a little bit. But how cute is that? I love making those. They're like um, for like fondant for like frosting molds is what they're kind of designed for. But you can find them in all different kinds of sea creatures and things like that on Amazon for sure. And then I also have a little sand dollar there that I got on Amazon too. Um, you could always use the one from the Dollar Tree as well. So excited. I noticed DollarTree.com. One of you guys told me to check. They are starting to add some of the shore living things to the website. So it's going to be soon, guys. Yay. Now on the little um, seashell, I think I may have underfilled it instead of overfilling it. So it does kind of have a jagged edge, but that actually makes it look a little bit more realistic like a real seashell. So we're gonna go with it. So I'm gonna use some ivory paint because these are just kind of clear glue at the moment and paint that. Look at that great texture on the seashell. It looks so cool when you paint these hot glue molds. And then I'm also going to paint the little starfish ivory as well. And we have some great decorations to decorate our little Easter eggs. The first time I made one of these, it like blew my mind. Um, um, I have a couple of the different seahorse ones. I love using them for those because I never can find any of those to decorate with. 
So now we can start decorating. Here's our little sand dollar. Just going to hot glue that right in the center of our burlap egg. And then doing our little crazy seashell over here to the left. And then our little starfish over on the right. Isn't it like a fun decoration for an Easter egg? Very coastal, very cute, but you could always get creative and do whatever kind of decoration you want on your Easter egg. So I just hot glue those down in the center of our egg. You could always use real seashells as well. That would be super cute, but I kind of wanted to use the mold for those. And then for the other eggs, I want to decorate those with shells as well. These are those little mini seashells that you get in the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree. I love decorating with those. My favorite is to put them in those little toy organizers from the Dollar Tree, um, just because they're easier to work with and get out than they are the bottle. So I just dump them in there. And they have all different kinds as well. So I thought we would repl replicate the polka dots that were on the Easter egg on the other side by just using seashells. So just doing a little thin bead of hot glue on the lip of each one of those seashells. We're just going to glue those down to that stained wood, kind of in a alternate like polka dot pattern. Just kind of alternating rows. Super easy and super fun. You know if there's an opportunity to decorate with seashells, your girl is going to take it. Okay, that one looks pretty good. And now we can start moving on to decorate the other side. I thought we'd switch it up on this side and use a little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. They're always available in my shop below. Sometimes you get all tiny ones like this. Sometimes they vary the size. Kind of depends. They also have these in blue. I get them in blue as well, but I love them. They're real little tiny starfish and they're dried the perfect ivory color for this project. So I'm just picking out enough of them to kind of give that same polka dot pattern that we got on the other side with seashells just by alternating them. They're kind of delicate, but once you get them glued on, they should be good to go. So just going to do a dot of hot glue everywhere I want one and just simply attach those. And I think these little coastal Easter eggs turned out so cute for the sign. So whimsical and fun for Easter and totally goes with the coastal vibe in my home. Now I wanted to make the hanger extra special, so I'm going to use some of this wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree. They have these um, in the square or the round um, balls. Um, and I love it because the colors are going to be perfect, that nice neutral color. I'm just going to leave it on the twine that's on there and simply tie that to our little sign. Just cutting it a little bit longer, removing some of the beads so I still have enough twine to work with so that I can tie that to the top. And I think that natural wood goes really well uh, with the natural colors that we used in the coastal DIY. Now, the only thing I thought this thing still needed was maybe a bow, but I wanted to do something coastal as well. So I'm going to use some of this great mesh ribbon. I love picking this up from the Dollar Tree because I think it looks a little bit like fishing net. They have it like in the white or tan or green colors. The tan is probably my favorite, but I do use the white a lot too. But we're going to use the tan for this one. See how it kind of resembles like an old net? I love the vibe it gives. So we're just going to make a really fun bow out of this. Just by kind of like you make a traditional bow. Pinch it in the middle, make a loop, make another loop and pinch it. And then we're going to do that like three times on each side. We're going to make a big bow. So we're going to have three loops on each side. You don't have to twist it or anything. Just pinch it in the middle. And then once you get three loops on both sides, um, I'm going to need a tail on that side as well. So just going to cut that off. And then to attach it in the middle, I'm just keeping it really good and pinched. And then I'm going to bring in some twine from the Dollar Tree. And just tie that in the center of the bow. It's going to give us a really fun coastal looking bow that we can decorate this sign with. 
I love using this stuff. Sometimes you don't even have to tie a bow. You can just tie a knot in the middle. You're still going to get that really fun effect. Absolutely beautiful. So just kind of cutting my tails down to make them even, pulling those the same direction as well. And then we're going to attach that to the hanger. I was trying to decide which side I wanted to put it on. And I'm just going to tie that on to the twine that's already on the hanger. And I think this little Easter DIY is ready to go. Loving the coastal vibes. I'm loving all of the natural little touches on there. So cute. Just trying to rearrange my big fluffy net bow. And this is how it turned out, our little coastal Easter eggs. This is definitely one of my favorites. And the great thing about this is you can use kind of whatever little beach treasures you have. I really like the look of the burlap and the little rope squiggles. I found this great wreath form from the Dollar Tree. It's just an orange wire carrot, but I thought we could do something fun and coastal with this. It's just got like the squiggly little lines and kind of the outline. Now I want to use um, some different kinds of Dollar Tree rope to cover that. I'm going to start with the 11 foot nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is the thinner, a longer one. And um, I thought that would make a great outline around the edges of the carrot because it's not too thick. So just starting down here at the tip, we're just going to simply hot glue the rope onto this and you know I have like the little beehive um, wreath form I'll have to do something with rope with that as well because it's so easy to DIY these with rope because sometimes they're hard, kind of hard to figure out how to decorate right so just working one section at a time I'm just going to hot glue that down this is the perfect width to cover the orange behind it and you won't be able to see it I'm working on a silicone mat, so that really helps with the excess hot glue because it's going to be removable. And just keep going around the shape of the carrot, just outlining that on there. Trying to make sure it doesn't get too stuck. I thought we would use two different kinds of rope today because the little squiggly lines in the middle, I think those are going to need even a smaller kind of rope. So I think I'm gonna use like the uh, six foot rope, maybe unrolled for that part. I do have some left over from the other DIY. So we're gonna glue it down, cut it down to size for the tip, and we have the carrot part nice and outlined. Um, you can always, uh, you know, flip it over, use your heat gun, kind of trim up some of the excess hot glue if you get too much. Now I'm also gonna do the same thing up here at the top. The little greenery coming out of the top of the carrot. We're going to outline that with that same exact rope, just hot gluing that around the edge. And we're not just going to do rope on this. We are going to add some other coastal touches, but for right now, we're just using rope to give us a really cute little wreath outline. Since these lines are straight and easy to do, I'm going to do these in that same rope. Just a straight shot across, just cutting that down to size and hot gluing that on. On both of those. Now the little squiggly lines, again, are going to have to go back and forth and back and forth. So I'm just going to use one of the ropes that is unwound to do that part to give me that little squiggly pattern. And it kind of already has that pattern like we did before on those little eggs. So it's going to work well for this. You just kind of have to hot glue down like one section at a time. And we're going to cover up all four of those little squiggle lines with that rope. And I'd like to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. Really appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit the like button. And when you're done watching, if you could comment your favorite DIY below, I always love your all's feedback and to read all of your nice comments. And if you haven't subscribed, we are trying to get to 15,000 subscribers. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button.
So just finishing up the fourth little squiggle line here. Then I thought we could do something fun with driftwood maybe. I did have some driftwood from Amazon. Um, and also some, I get the driftwood filler from Target. I was trying to decide which one I was going to use for this. And I think I'm going to go with the ones from Target. They're a nice and easy to DIY with. They're nice and flat. Um, they usually have these all the time at Target, um, back in like their floral section. And if you watch, they do go on sale. I always try to stock up when they go on sale because they're so fun to craft with. And it always gives you that coastal look. And I just am hot gluing those. I kind of found some shorter ones for the shorter parts and some longer ones for the longer parts. Just gluing that from rope to rope. Just to kind of give me a fun little driftwood greenery for the top of our carrot. Just another little coastal touch to this little carrot wreath. So I picked these sizes out specifically to fill it up and it does a pretty good job. Now I thought some of those little uh, tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree would make perfect decorations to decorate this carrot a little bit more. Trying to figure out which ones I'm going to use and then I'm just going to start hot gluing those to the little rope there in the center. On this one I thought I would use like just the little seashell ones and just kind of alternate them like one up, one down going all the way across to give me a little shell detail. Now I have two rows there, so I thought I would go in maybe with a different kind of seashell, some of these little spiral-like shells, and kind of do another row of those, kind of side by side. The colors um, are very similar to the white rope, so it's not a big contrast, but it's definitely a beautiful little detail when you get to looking at this little carrot. Isn't that cute and fun? We've got rope, we've got driftwood, we've got seashells. Definitely an unexpected carrot. Perfect for a coastal Easter decor. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for Easter. And you could always hang this on a door as well. It's not a really big wreath. I'm kind of hanging mine at an angle because I think it looks better that way. It was actually pretty easy to put together. This would be great for, I use mine as a wall hanging, but you could also use it on your door as a wreath. Okay, our next DIY, I picked this little basket up from the Target Dollar Spot for $5. It's basically just a rope basket. You could uh, make this pretty easily with Dollar Tree rope if you wanted to wrap it with like some white ribbon and glue that together, but for $5, I thought we would give it a go. I thought we could make this a really pretty coastal Easter centerpiece. So the first thing we're gonna use is some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, just kind of breaking that all up. And I wanna make like a kind of a giant bunny nest here for Easter. And I thought the brown color would definitely go well with kind of my coastal decor. And then I also picked up this little white bunny for $5 at the Target dollar spot. And it is simply just a white ceramic bunny. You could always use one that you already have, but I definitely wanted the white color. I'm gonna go with like a lot of whites and browns on this project and warm colors. So I kind of just set him towards the back there so we can decorate the rest. And then I picked up these little gold Easter eggs at the Dollar Tree. I love these because the color is going to be nice and neutral and I won't have to paint them or anything. And we can just open the package and dump them in. But the color is great. Definitely going to go with my coastal vibe. But I want it to be kind of like tropical, not traditional Easter. So I did pick up some palm fronds also from the Target Dollar Spot. Um, you can sometimes find these something similar at Dollar Tree, but I really like these ones from the Target Dollar Spot. I think they look nice and tropical, but you can kind of use whatever you've got. They do have tropical leaves from the Dollar Tree for sure. But look how cute these are. So I thought we would cut them down a little bit. They were a little bit too long. And that was probably the most difficult part. <laughs> and just start stabbing those in to the Spanish moss. 
And can you kind of see the vibe we're going with with this? I think it's going to be really pretty for an Easter centerpiece. This will look great on your table for Easter. And I think one more is going to be really good. Just kind of poking that down in there. Couldn't get any easier than that. Just kind of scattering the little gold Easter eggs around as well. Now this is that mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree that I think looks like fishing net. So I thought it'd be fun just to kind of cut a piece, kind of lay it in there to kind of give like a fishing net feel. And kind of maybe do one this direction as well, just to provide a little bit more texture, a little bit more coastal fun. And kind of arranging the little gold Easter eggs on it, around it, under it. I like the little eggs peeking out from behind the palm fronds. I think that looks cute. And then a little sand dollar from the Dollar Tree. And some of my coastal stash, I have like some starfish that I get on Amazon. You can always use the ones from Dollar Tree as well. Super excited to the, for hopefully they'll bring both of those back again this year for the Shore Living Line. And just kind of scatter the little sand dollars, seahorses in there, and the eggs, and kind of arrange them until I'm happy with it. Then I thought maybe a few seashells as well. These are just some seashells from the Dollar Tree. Just kind of have to scatter them around to get it exactly how you like it. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute, a little coastal Easter centerpiece. So easy to put together. If you can't find this exact basket, you could pretty much do that with any kind of a shallow bowl. Just enough to hold all your goodies in there. Okay, up next, we're going to use some more of these glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. I love these. And um, some little galvanized metal Easter decorations. I picked up a bunny and a little Easter chick. And then one of these long skinny um, Easter egg signs from the Dollar Tree. This is the perfect color for my coastal decor, that like robin egg blue. That we could do a really fun, simple like Easter sign. And I wanted to use the galvanized metal. I didn't really want to paint them though. So I thought maybe the glass stickers might be a fun option to decorate these little guys. They're going to fit perfectly on that long sign though. They're just the right width. So I'm just going to open up some of these glass stickers. They're like a um, blue and like metal color of detail on them as well. And they're a little bit frosted. And we're just going to decorate our little bunny and chick with little starfish and seashells, whatever other goodies are on here. And couldn't be any easier. Just kind of doing like a, kind of like a floral design, but with seashells. And I'm always looking for fun ways to try to decorate those galvanized metal pieces because I do like them, but sometimes I think they look a little bit plain if you leave them as is. So we're going to do the same thing over here with our little baby chick. And then I want to attach those to the front of that long Easter sign, but I also want it to spell out the word Easter. So I think that's going to be a cute background for that. There's our little bunny and our little chick. The great thing about the glass stickers is because if you're not happy with they are where, where they're at, you can just pick them up and stick them back down. They're extra sticky. And as you can see, they fit on there really nicely, that long little Easter sign. I'm just going to attach mine with hot glue. And simply stick those down. You could leave it as is. It's super cute, kind of abstract looking for Easter. I do want mine to say Easter though, so I am going to add to it once I get both of these attached. And be careful when you are um, gluing down that metal, it does get hot. We're just going to use simply some of the wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could just spell out the word Easter all the way down the sign. Just have to find the right letters. And I'm just going to use the natural wood. It's going to make it super easy. 
and just hot glue those down, kind of doing the middle letter first. We're going to do E-A-S on the bunny and T-E-R on the chick, just spelling out the word Easter all the way down. And you could always paint or stain these. I think the raw wood, though, totally goes with my coastal vibe. And this was kind of an outside the box project, but I think it did turn out really cute for Easter and it's definitely unique. Now I want to replace the hanger on this one with some of that wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree as well. So I just measured out a piece that is the right length and I'm simply going to tie that on. I just think the wood bead garland uh, makes your projects look a little extra special and I think the raw wood definitely goes well for a coastal vibe. This one I don't think I cut the twine quite long enough, so just to reinforce it on the back, I'm just going to tie another knot of twine on there just to kind of salvage it and make it sturdier. And there is our little Easter sign. So cute, I love that little long blue sign. And this is great for like a skinny wall or an area you don't have a lot of room to decorate. A little skinny coastal Easter sign. Just a fun idea of how to use those long signs. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult to decorate. Hey guys, if you're enjoying today's video, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps. And if you haven't, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Okay, I thought we could make another one of the long Easter signs. And so I have some more ideas for you how to make a coastal sign. I got a hop sign from the Dollar Tree, a little blue Easter egg sign from the Dollar Tree, and then a long wood Easter bunny cutout sign. And the reason I got this hop sign is because I thought it would be a great way to get some letters for a sign. Um, way cheaper than buying the big letters from anywhere else. You can just cut this down because these signs are pretty easy to cut. So I'm just using a box cutter to cut out my H. And um, I want to do, you know, my own thing for the O. So I think I'm going to make that like an Easter egg, like a coastal Easter egg. So I can save that bunny for something else. But basically I bought this just for that H and that P. And they do have glitter on there. It's not too bad though. Once I get it cut down to size, I'm just going to sand it a little bit just to give myself a smooth edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here by cutting the P off. And that is just one way you can reuse some of these Dollar Tree signs. Um, sometimes I get the ones with lots of words on them, cut them down into multiple signs, and you have like tons of signs for your tear tray. And it only costs you like $1.25 for all of them. The colors aren't too bad on that. I probably am going to do my own thing on that. But for the O for hop, I thought we could just use an Easter egg. And I got one of these little blue ones from the Dollar Tree. They come in like a two pack. It's just about the right size for an O. Now I'm going to use that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree to cover my letters to kind of give them a coastal feel. That way I don't have to deal with any of the glitter or colors that are already on there. And I just draw that design out on the back of the wallpaper. And then you can just cut that out to size. And you'll just have a big sticker decal that's going to look nice and coastal. I love the whiteboard. Uh, my favorite is the blue tropical leaf of removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. But this is probably my second favorite. And super easy to cut out. So now it's just a giant sticker. We can just peel and stick that on. Easy peasy. It's kind of the same feel that was on there before, but no color and no glitter. But I think that's going to look good against that little wood bunny sign that we're going to put these on. I'm going to do the same thing with my P, just using an ink pen to draw it out. And you know, you could also do that just to make letter stickers like that and kind of save your letters if you wanted. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and cover my letters though, but that would be a cute hack as well. If you have a middle part like that, if you just kind of bend it, it gets it easy to cut out that little center part. And we have our little coastal H and our little coaster P for our little hop sign. 
If you don't get it on there perfect, you can always smooth it off a little bit with a sanding block to take off any excess. Then we're also gonna cover the egg. That way all of my letters will look consistent. They're all gonna have that like white board feel. Kinda tie it all together. So we're just gonna cover the Easter egg with that paper as well. So now we have all of our letters. I do like to sand over the top of this just to kinda blend that in, make it look a little bit more rustic and weathered. Kind of rough up the glossiness of the paper as well. Now here is our little wood bunny sign, super cute. I love the natural color. I think that looks really coastal and it's got that cute little bunny cut out at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger. And just like before, we're gonna use some of that wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree just to replace the hanger. Just by knotting that off on the back, making sure that it's gonna stay put. If it doesn't, I just add another knot. So here's our little coastal letters that we made, our hop letters, super cute. They fit on there really nicely. And we're just gonna attach those with hot glue. And just a cheaper hack to get some of the bigger letters to use for your DIY for sure. And I am going to decorate uh, the egg a little bit more, but for now we're just going to glue these down. They're just about the right size, and I kind of want to do like the egg at an angle. I'm going to go ahead and put the P on first to make sure that I know exactly how much room I have. I just kind of glue that a little askew. Kind of emphasizes the fact that that's an Easter egg. And then to decorate it, we're just gonna use a sand dollar. Um, you could use the one from the Dollar Tree. This is actually one that I got on Amazon. Whatever you have, and I'm just gonna glue that on my Easter egg, just kind of leaving it the natural color. Just a fun little coastal touch to this DIY. And this one was pretty easy to put together. Just a few steps involved. And this is how it looks hanging in my home for Easter. A pretty good way to get some lettering like that, but using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I think it turned out super coastal and cute. These long skinny signs are great for like areas where you don't have a lot of room. And this is how it looks hanging in my dining area. Okay, you've made it all the way to the final reveal. I'm gonna show you all 15 of the Coastal Easter DIYs we made today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and then please comment your favorite Easter DIY in the comments below. I always like to keep track so I can do my best DIY video at the end of the year. If the wind could spread your love, what if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.
and smile What if the wind could spread your love What if your sweetness could reach everyone There'd be no wars Thank you so much for joining me today. This was kind of a long one, but I hopefully you got lots of coastal Easter DIY ideas. I want to give a huge thank you to all of my crafty beach bumps for supporting my channel. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Pammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Run, Maria Grace. Donna Shiner, Sandy C, and Iris Cornelius. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. And if you'd like to watch more Dollar Tree DIYs, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Happy crafting.